Satan and Devils Introduction This doctrinal study on Satan, the devils, and the race of giants that are found throughout the Bible at different times. The word demon is not found in the Bible, so we will steer clear of it in our study as we strive to be as biblical as possible. This study will no doubt anger Satan, so I suggest you pray for wisdom, discernment, and protection as you endeavor to learn more about your enemy so that you may live a victorious life. Some have said, we should not study the devil at all, because the Bible says, we are to be simple concerning evil. This is partially true, because it is used out of context in this way. Romans 16 verse 19, For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. We are not to learn how to drink, or how to smoke, or how to cuss, because we are to be simple in that respect towards evil. As far as knowing your enemy and his tactics is concerned, God has given us passage after passage on Satan and his cohorts so that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. One may ask, why does God allow evil? Or why did God create the devil? Can I tell you a little secret that the devil has been trying to keep from the human race for the last 2000 years? It is the same secret that God had originally been keeping from Satan for the first 4000 years since before the world began. This secret was revealed to the Apostle Paul a few years after the resurrection of Christ, which was the answer of God to these very questions. It has to do with the one new man found in Ephesians 2 verse 15. Ephesians 2 verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, Satan and devils, dispensationally considered. Chapter 1. Satan's Creation In order to begin a chronological study on this vital subject we shall first look to the oldest book of the Bible, which is the book of Job, not Genesis. In its pages, we shall find the title of Satan's race of beings, which were originally known as the sons of God. Job 38 verses 4 to 7, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. From these scriptures, we can see that the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy at the laying of the cornerstone of the earth. This would mean they were created before man was on day six. They are very possibly the first things created once time and space were created to accommodate them. I personally believe that they were created not between Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 colon 2 as some believe but three words earlier back in verse number one. I believe that the morning stars and sons of God were created right after the heaven was created, and just prior to the earth's creation. Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven, right here, and the earth. God has two programs found in the Bible, the prophecy program, that which was written from the foundation of the earth, dealing with Israel and the law, and the mystery program, that which was kept secret from the foundation of the earth. The prophecy program has to do with God reclaiming the earth through the Messiah and the nation of Israel, while the mystery program has to do with the reclaiming of the heavenly realm through the body of Christ, the church, and its head, Jesus Christ. The mystery program was revealed to Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, in his 13 epistles, and it concerns the dispensation of the church age, which was hidden from the writers of the prophecy program, i.e., the prophets. The morning stars. Who exactly are the morning stars that all sang together on that glorious day? Scriptures leave us little information on this subject other than to clarify that Jesus himself is called the bright and morning star in Revelation 22 verse 16. Revelation 22 verse 16, I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. Many cults have wrongly assumed because Jesus is referred to as the angel of the Lord at times. And here is the bright and morning star that he himself is an angel. Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon Church, a cult, has wrongly concluded that Jesus and Lucifer were both created as angels, and they teach they are actual brothers. Hebrews should clear that up for you. Hebrews 2 verse 16, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. The book of Judges makes mention of stars arrayed in courses battling in the spirit realm as actual battles are being fought on earth, such as the case of Jabez when she slew Sisera. Judges 5 verse 20, they fought from heaven, 
The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Lucifer, after he had become Satan, the adversary, said he would exalt his throne above the thrones of the stars of God, which denotes that a realm of authority has been given to these beings by God. Isaiah 14 verse 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. Notice Satan's location when he makes these five proclamations. He is out of heaven and below it because he says he will ascend into heaven. So, he was on earth at the time he said this. Daniel records how that Satan empowers the Antichrist during the tribulation period by giving him power over some of the host of heaven and the stars of heaven to cast them down to the earth to stop the Jews from sacrificing in the temple to God because Satan wants their worship. Satan is called the prince of the host. Daniel 8 verses 9 to 12 And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great, toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yeah, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. John in the book of the Revelation tells of two groups of stars. The first group represents the twelve tribes of Israel, and the other stars are the angels that the dragon, Satan, drew down to the earth at the midpoint of the tribulation period. This is still yet to be fulfilled in the future. Revelation 12 verses 1 to 5 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, traveling in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. This event many believe happened at the birth of Christ. But according to the account in Matthew, Jesus was two years old when Herod had all the children of Bethlehem slain to try to kill the Christ child. Since the woman represents more than one person, the nation of Israel, then the man-child could also represent more than one person. Do not take my word for it, take your time and study it out in scripture. Keep reading. We all have been told that the man-child is Jesus, and he does fit the description very well, but it is not Jesus. It is not an individual, but a group of people, just as the woman is not an individual, but a group of people, Israel. Remember Revelation is not a historical book, it is a prophetical book of future events. The man-child that comes from Israel, the woman, is the 144,000 male Jewish virgins that preach the gospel of the kingdom for the first three and half years of the tribulation period before they, the man-child, are caught up unto God and to his throne. Bear with me, and I will prove it. Revelation 12 verses 6 to 9 And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Notice how these fallen angels are referred to as stars being cast down to the earth, and they are referred to as the dragon's angels, which fought with the dragon against Michael and his angels. A more in-depth study into just what the morning stars are and what their function is will be discussed in later chapters, but for now we will devote our attention to the most infamous angel of them. All, Satan, formerly known as Lucifer, the son of the morning before his fall. Chapter 2. His Fall. The prophet Ezekiel, while prophesying against the king of Tyrus, begins to attribute things to Tyrus that are not humanly possible to have happened. So, we can ascertain by the context that Ezekiel is now talking about the power that was behind the king of Tyrus, which was none other than Satan himself. Ezekiel 28 verses 12 to 19, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, 
the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways, from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries, by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee, thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Lucifer is called in this passage the anointed, set apart, cherub that covereth, which simply meant that he was created as a cherub angel to cover the throne of God. The word cherubim is simply plural for cherub in Hebrew. There was only one anointed cherub among the cherubim. He covered it not because it needed protection, but rather so that those other created beings did not look upon God in all his glory. Lucifer shielded them from looking directly at God. His position was most likely for the angel's protection, not God's. The fact that he was full of wisdom meant that the others were not and the fact that he was perfect in beauty meant that nothing was as beautiful to look upon in all of God's creation as was he. It mentions that all the grandest of precious stones were a part of his covering or attire. Some even suggest that they were a part of his very makeup and being. He was able to lead heaven in the praise and worship of God from the very beginning of his creation as God put inside him how to play the harps and pipes which were possibly even a part of his makeup and being as well. Lucifer fell because he allowed his beauty and brightness to cause his heart to be lifted up in pride against God, and he began to ponder sinful thoughts that led to sinful deeds. He is said to have been in Eden in all of his glory, which would have had to have been after Adam and Eve's creation, because after God breathed in them the breath of God it says that it was then that God planted the garden of God in Eden and not before. Ephesians 2 verse 2 Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air is just one of the many titles possessed by Satan today, along with the title of the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. It was pride in his beauty, power, and wisdom that led him to utter these five damning statements in his heart, which are found in the writings of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 14, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Lucifer now becomes Satan and begins to initiate his five-point plan to be like the Most High, which if you will notice are all focused on Satan's plans in the heavens and not on the earth, at least not yet. In order to secure these positions, Satan enlists a third of the angelic host to follow him in his rebellion against God. How does he do this you may wonder? Well for starters, he is second only to God in wisdom and beauty, which gives him a distinct advantage over all other created beings. And secondly, he lies to them. No one is stupid enough to believe that Satan just went right up to all these angels and said, Hey, does anyone want to follow me in a battle against God, which we can never possibly win? And he would have never said, oh yeah, I forgot. If you do decide to join me, you will all get to go to the lake of fire to burn for an eternity for your sin, so who is with me? No, Satan used everything he had in his power to deceive these beings into following him into this rebellion. He used his beauty, power, and his wisdom to draw a third part of them unto himself. Which angels was it that Satan drew along with him? Just ask yourself this question. If you were Satan and you were going to lead a rebellion against God, who would you try to get on your side, the weakest angels, or the most powerful angels? Of course, Satan went after the most powerful of the beings created by God, which would make perfect sense, and is also backed up by scripture. In the book of Daniel, the angel Gabriel is talking to Daniel, and he describes a battle that he was in and the only other chief angel that was available to help him was the archangel Michael. Daniel 10 verse 21, But I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things. 
but Michael your prince. Scriptures declare that a third of the angelic host followed Satan in his rebellion on this day and sealed their eternal destiny in everlasting fire. Matthew 25 verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Prior to Satan and his cohort's imprisonment in the lake of fire, they presently occupy the very thrones they secured at their initial rebellion against God in high places mentioned in Ephesians. Ephesians 6 verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These principalities were ordained of God in his perfect wisdom, and they were corrupted by Satan and his corrupt wisdom when he rebelled in heaven. Satan and his cohorts occupy a third of the thrones and dominions in the spirit realm and especially those that have to do with earth. Colossians 1 verse 16, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him, and for him. These positions are being usurped today by Satan and his minions, but they will be retaken at the midpoint of the tribulation period when Satan and his crowd are cast out of heaven. Revelation 12 verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Chapter 3, His Title While Satan was observing God's latest creation, man, he no doubt heard God say words that sent an angry chill up his prideful spine. Genesis 1 verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. How dare God give dominion of the earth unto man, and not unto someone as beautiful, intelligent, and powerful as himself, the devil must have thought. And with as much dedication as Satan put towards acquiring thrones and principalities in heavenly places, he equally dedicated himself into devising his plan for the overthrow of earth and man. It did not take long for Satan to find a way to bring down mankind, because once man was in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam a rule to follow. Satan surmised that if this rule were broken, then man would fall as well because Satan knew that God had created us all with a free will to choose to follow him or not. Genesis 2 verses 15 to 17, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden, to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. If you are wondering where God is in all this, just remember that he has a secret that he is going to reveal to the Apostle Paul concerning the resurrection of Christ that he was hiding from Satan for another 4,000 years. See the book of Ephesians, or just keep on reading, and it will be explained in greater detail as we go along in our study. Genesis is the book of first mentions. And here Satan is revealed to us as temporarily possessing the body of a serpent. Satan is not a serpent today. Adam had nothing to fear from any beast however, for he had been given dominion over them and they feared him. But this was no ordinary creature. Genesis 3 verses 1 to 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Have you ever heard the saying, He fell for the oldest trick in the book? Well, most people have, but they do not have a clue as to what that means. The book referred to as the Bible, and the oldest trick is Eve falling for the devil's lie. First, Satan sets her up by deliberately questioning God's word. Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Then Satan flat out contradicts God by saying, Genesis 3 verses 4 to 5, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Notice, we have a serpent here that can talk. Now I know I am arguing from a position of silence, but I do not believe any of the other animals had the gift of speech. Sorry Disney fans. So, Satan uses a serpent's body to claim to be another authority other than God. What an interesting concept. This authority claims that we can run our own lives apart from God. We can determine for ourselves what is right or wrong. After 6,000 years, we are still falling for this same old lie. Notice that after Adam and Eve sinned, their eyes were opened, 
and they were ashamed of their nakedness, because they now possessed the knowledge of good and evil. The Bible says that they knew that they were naked. This was not a good thing as the Mormons like to teach. Genesis 3 verses 6 to 7, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Notice that they made aprons to cover what they perceived to be their nakedness, but look what happened when God came on the scene. Genesis 3 verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The Hebrew word voice is also the same as the word word found throughout the scriptures. You cannot hear a voice walking, but you can hear the word of God, Jesus Christ, walking in the garden. This I believe was none other than a pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ physically walking in the midst of the garden. Theologians refer to this as a theophany. Genesis 3 verses 9 to 11, And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Now, wait a minute. Why did Adam say that he was naked when he and Eve just made themselves clothes out of fig leaves? Because they were clothed enough for themselves to feel comfortable in until God showed up and conviction set in. Notice also that Adam hid himself amongst the trees. He did not want God to see any of his nakedness. Genesis 3 verses 12 to 15, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The serpent lost its legs, as a reminder to us today when we see it, that the devil is sneaky. Verse 15 is a prophecy of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the seed of a woman. All other humans are of the seed of their father, except Jesus Christ. This is because the Savior of all mankind must not be born as a sinner like you, and I are because of Adam's fall. Praise God. It does not say the serpent will bruise the seed of the woman's head, which is Jesus. The bruising of Jesus' heel is in reference the bruising of Jesus' heel is in reference to his crucifixion, while the reference to the bruising of Satan's head is for when he is cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Another response to the fall of Satan was the creation of hell as a place of judgment for their rebellion. Matthew 25 verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Genesis 3 verse 16, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Ladies do not blame your husband in the delivery room for all the pain you went through, you've had a lot to do with it. You can bring it up to her when you meet her one day. Notice also that God further explains the role of the husband and wife in this verse. I wonder how different it might have been for women today if Eve had not listened to the devil. Genesis 3 verses 17 to 19, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The earth was cursed because of Adam's sin of listening to his wife instead of listening to God. But the curse upon Eve and the earth will be lifted during the kingdom when the king claims his rightful kingdom which Adam lost for him. Genesis 3 verses 20 to 24 And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So, he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, 
to keep the way of the tree of life. Dominion has now been lost by man, and he must leave the capital of his former kingdom before even his first human subject to rule over was ever born. Not only was Dominion lost, but Dominion was also handed over to Satan and he now becomes the god of this world, and all the kingdoms of the world would one day belong to him. Satan consolidated power as the prince of the power of the air, and now as the god of this world. He is ruling a third of the angelic host in the heavenlies and mankind, and will continue to do so until Christ returns to repossess this earth. In case you do not believe that Satan is in control of this world system and that he gives it to whomever he pleases consider his words and the words of Christ at the tempting in the wilderness. Matthew 4 verses 8 to 9 again, The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Notice that Jesus challenged Satan every time he incorrectly applied the scriptures, but he never challenged Satan when he claimed that all the kingdoms of this world were his. Another important thing to note is that Adam and Eve did not die physically on the same day that they ate of the tree, and so many have said that they just died spiritually but hold on a minute. They did die physically in the day they ate thereof, just not on the day they ate thereof. What I mean by this is that according to God a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day according to 1 Peter 3 verse 8. Ask yourself this, did Adam, or any other sinner, live longer than one day in God's eyes? No, they all died in the day that they were born in God's eyes. No one ever lived to start a second day in God's eyes. They all died short of a thousand years, which proves that God keeps his word. Brethren be not ignorant of this one thing. A day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day.